The following is a Just Green production. Hello, everyone. It's the week of October 2nd, 2017. My name is Taylor Cooper, and this might be news to you. What up, everybody? Week 7 might be news. Follow us on Twitter at mightbenews247. That's mightbenews247. Get at us on SoundCloud, iTunes. Follow us. Subscribe, you know, whatever. Share. Let your people know you're listening to Might Be News. I'm Taylor Cooper. With me, as always, co-host Kev. Say what up, Kev. Yo, guys. What up? What up, co-host Dan? What's going on, guys? Hyped to be here, guys. Excited. Seven weeks, you know, doing the damn thing, having a good time. Uh, pretty jam-packed episode this week. Psych. <laughs> <laughs> um, first things first, I got to give a, a birthday shout out to my wonderful fiance, Jackie. Today, actually, October 2nd is is her birthday. I love you, Jackie. Happy birthday. You're awesome. Bah, 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 bah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jackie. She's awesome. You you hear Jackie in every episode. She lets you know it's a Just Green production, whoever that is. And um, uh, she's in all the little the little skit things we got here. Are you just going to sit there and look stupid? Yeah, that's Jackie. <laughs> that's Jackie. Uh, so happy birthday, babe. Uh, we start every episode off with some good news. <clears throat> uh, these guys got some good news for you. I don't have any good news. You know, I've been frustrated this week. With some other things. All right. Politics are ruining football now. Politics are ruining football. Here's some good news. Hey, did you hear the news? This better be good. You want the good news or the bad news? Give me the good stuff. All right. Week seven with the good news. What do you got, Danny? All right. Uh, first one's coming out of Queens, New York. A uh, goodwill worker was sorting through donations at the organization outlet store in Long Island City last month when she made a startling discovery. You know what she found? $39,000 in cash. Holy shit, I would have put it in my pocket. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) So, assistant manager Kendall Keys, who's been working at the Goodwill for about a year, said she was initially thought someone was playing a prank with her when she found the envelope of money. Keys turned the wad of cash over to her manager, who along with other Goodwill staff eventually tracked down the owners of the lost money tracked it all the way to California. Wow. So the purse belonged to a 101-year-old grandmother who had recently passed away, and her kids were going through all her belongings and giving everything to the goodwill. So this 101-year-old lady lived through the Depression, so they said that she used to store money just anywhere. <laughs> and, um, well, she stored $39,000 in this purse, the uh, Goodwill workers found it, made the trip back over to New York, gave the money to her grandkids, who then in return gave them $4,000 in cash. That's wow. Awesome. That's awesome. That's pretty wild. Just putting money everywhere. Can you just imagine that? Just putting well, money everywhere? I mean, I'll throw like a $20 $39, bill. $39,000 in a, just a random purse in your closet? $39,000. <laughs> it's insane. That's a lot of money. Like, imagine you put your jeans on that you haven't worn in a while, and you find like a $5 bill in there. How <laughs> hype are you? You imagine just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I got to go out tonight. I got to get this purse. I haven't worn this purse in forever. There's $39,000 in it. Grandma. <laughs> well, see, Grandma I, put this purse in there. I thought this was pretty cool because this is a goodwill organization outlet. Yeah. They could have just put that money in their pocket and not said nothing. Oh, Went God, yeah. Their, their they way. could have put it towards Goodwill and say, hey, this was a donation. Could have. But from California, they tracked it down all the way to New York and returned the $39,000. I did community awesome. service at a Goodwill. It was nice. Good for you. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> it was court-ordered community service. But I, <laughs> I did it there. It was nice. Hey, uh, Kev, you got some good news? Yeah. Uh, groom jumps into a river while shooting his wedding photos to save a drowning child. Uh, Clayton Cook and his now wife, Brittany, just got married a couple weeks ago. In the middle of their photo shoot, Clayton realized that a kid was drowning in a nearby river. Without any hesitation, Clayton jumps into the river to pull this drowning kid out 
in his tuxedo. He said, screw the pictures, screw everything. I need to save this kid. And his wife just said, that's Clayton. That's my Clayton. That is something that he just did instinctively. I, I thought that I saw this story. I thought it was absolutely amazing. That's wild. I mean, like nobody was around this kid. He was just floating around in this. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's not even like it was engagement photos. He was in a full blown tux in his wedding. In his wedding. And he jumped in the river. Jumped in the river to save this kid. Good wow. for him. Yeah. It's nuts. Good and for him. The kid is living. And he's cool. <laughs> yeah, he's chilling. Probably playing video games, disrespecting his mom. <laughs> what do you got, Danny? All right. So anybody that follows college football has probably seen this story. Uh, I saw this and I thought it was incredible. So the um, Iowa Hawkeyes have a new tradition in football that I think is hands down the best tradition there is. Go Hawkeyes. Yes. So um, the Iowa Hawkeyes have a seating capacity of 70,585, which gives them uh, incredible strength in numbers. The stadium is located next to the new University of Iowa Steed Family Children's Hospital. At the end of the first quarter, every single person in that stadium turns around and waves to the kids watching the college football game from the hospital. That's awesome. Wow. Absolutely incredible. That's really awesome. It's very cool. So that's your good news for week seven. Some pretty good news. Pretty good. It's good. It's good. I'm trying. It's good. Trying. Well, there's a lot of negative, negative shit going on in the world. And that's why we try to start every show, you know, with a little bit of the lighter side, you know, as I loosely touched on a minute ago, it's been a crazy week, uh, news wise, and it's I'm gonna be honest, it's wearing on me a little bit. We can tell. It's nonstop, you know. It's on every channel. Everywhere you look, Facebook, Twitter, news updates, constant news updates. It's 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 getting a little crazy. It was tough. I was I was searching the news outlets looking for some good stories and Sorting through so many bad stories to find one good story. It's the the it's ridiculous. The, it's a dog shit pile yep. that you got to like literally get to the bottom of. And mm-hmm. um, you know, it's tough. It's tough staying away from this stuff. And I'm not going to get too far into it because you know I talk. You know, we did a little show prep and we're talking about it, and it just it got heated in here. Not that we disagree, but just because we feel a certain kind of way about it, and. and Listen, I'm not here to preach to anybody, but point blank, man. Sometimes you gotta you gotta protest in order to to bring attention to some things, and uh, I think that the important thing is to look at this and 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 ask why are they protesting instead of getting mad about how they're protesting. They're not killing anybody. They're not hurting anybody. Ask somebody why they're protesting instead of talking shit about how how they're protesting. So that's and, all I'm going to say. And sometimes they're going to use the only stage that they have. That's that's what they have. They do you know, people are like, "Oh, don't don't they shouldn't be doing it at the game. They shouldn't be doing it period whatever. Do it on their own time." I mean, they get paid to be there. That is their own time. All right. That's can, it. Can I say something real quick? Yeah. My Twitter handle is D Charlone. I am now accepting all those tickets to football games for people who are protesting. So if you want to give me your tickets, I'll take them. The crazy thing is, all right, not even going to get too too crazy into it, but like people on both sides of the fence are protesting football right now. People are on the left are all mad because Colin Kaepernick doesn't have a job protesting the NFL. Uh, and then now people on the right are are mad about football because of this anthem thing. It's insanity. At D. Charlone, I will take your tickets. And then at Kev Kinder, right, <laughs> Kev? At Kev Kinder, because I don't give a shit. <laughs> wow. Um, all right, well, something that I did find interesting just to kind of t- talk about here, uh, as we do in the beginning of the show, we just find something weird to talk about and usually get into some other tangent about The Office or something. Um. I saw this. The Office is a great show. The Office is a great show. I'm just saying that we usually come back to talking about The Office, which is what just happened right now. So I'm going to cut that and get back to my initial point, which is SpaceX. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, I've seen Space Jam. Space Jam. 
I'm talking about SpaceX. It's a Space company X. run by the guy <laughs> Elon Musk, uh, who's who's the uh, one of the head guys at Tesla car company. Uh, he's also he was on Trump's like uh, panel for science or something, whatever. Anyway, he's not anymore. Um, he's making these these shingles that are solar panels and all that shit. But anyway, that has nothing to do with SpaceX. SpaceX is his company that apparently it's. Its end goal as a company is a multi-planetary existence for the human race. That sounds crazy. That sounds absolutely ridiculous right now. What does that mean to you? That we're going to be living on multiple planets? Yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, that's... You hit the nail on the head. Yeah, that sounds stupid. Danny, what do you think about that? <laughs> Sci-fi. <laughs> Sci-fi. Hard, hard for me to follow. Well, and this yeah, we're going to get to Mars, and there's going to be aliens there. Listen, what if there Straight is? Straight up aliens. What if there is? Yeah, we're all dead. Well, maybe. Maybe. I'm down to see some aliens. Dude, I'm down to see some aliens. Uh, yeah. You're not down to see some aliens? What? Kev, if are they you, are, are you? friendly aliens, yes, absolutely, but what if they are not? Kev, all right, let me ask you both a question. Not to get religious or anything, but do you believe in... Life outside of planet oh, Earth. Absolutely. You have to be so small headed to think about how big the universe is and to say there is no other living organism or species out there. Dan, are you small headed? <laughs> <laughs> am I answering this or is it my wife? <laughs> um, Do you believe in aliens? Uh, yeah, I believe. I mean, I, I I stand with Kev here on this that it, you, you it, there's got to be there, there has there, to there be. has to be if we exist and if all the other things on this planet exist there has to be something else out there even if we don't know where it is or if it's in a galaxy far far away like. On Solo and all them motherfuckers. Well, dude, we talked about it last season that there was some uh, solar system that was found, but it would take us million years to get there. Yeah. And it was similar to Earth. Right. But, uh, dude, you'd have to be... So there was, what, like five planets that might be... Uh, inhabitable? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was it called. I forget. Ah, I don't remember. Slacking. Failure. <laughs> but yeah, there was like they found this like solar system somewhere. It was like, yeah, it would have taken like... A million years to get there. Like 75 light years yeah, or some something shit like, like that. that. It's nuts. And But there's like five planets in there, Danny, that could like, might be inhabitable. Like we might I be think able I to heard live about there. that. Yeah. It was recently that they discovered this, right? right. A whole right. other solar system yeah. or something like that? Yeah. 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 SpaceX has this yeah. new rocket that they're working on called the BFR, which awesomely stands for Big Fucking Rocket. That's what it stands for. Boom. That's, that's the technical term for this <laughs> rocket. And I guess I was watching this video, and I, it was very long and very detailed, and I'm not a scientist. So what I got out of it was that they want to colonize the moon first and essentially build a space station gas station orbiting the moon so that they could fly a rocket from Earth to the moon, orbit, refuel, and then blast off again and go to Mars. This reminds me of too much of Armageddon. Mars is the the destination. That's where they want to go. Like That's, when they zoom around the back of the moon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever <laughs> seen... Hold, listen, <laughs> hold on. Do you want me to hold your hand so you don't start crying that you think it's a movie? <laughs> no, ass wipe. <laughs> Thanks. No, like the entire time he's talking about like docking on the moon, all I'm thinking about is fucking Armageddon and getting that freaking, the slingshot. Yeah, the <laughs> slingshot effect. They did, they did that in Apollo 13 as well. You see that movie? Yeah. Yeah. Good one? Yeah. It's true. It's not, oh, not sci fi. Oh, by the way, by the way, not to get off on topic, but I did have some sad feelings watching a movie. Really? I, yes. This week? Yes, this week. What really? was it? It was 13 hours. Secret Soldier of Benghazi. Oh, okay. that was a good movie. Dude, good movie. when when uh, Jim's boy dies, yeah. to go, there we go, right back to the office. <laughs> <laughs> His name is John in real life, not Jim. 
Wow. But when his boy dies yeah. and then he he's telling his wife how he's not coming back home or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that got me that got me sad. Yeah. And I felt my emotions were Wow, Kev. That's a breakthrough. Oh. We that like the first time week. is that like the first no time it's you... not the first time because last week when we were thinking about it i could not think of a time that i was but i wanted to bring it up since i felt it this past week wow i'm happy for you <laughs> Do you <laughs> feel like refreshed after oh i felt so refreshed i felt ready for bed you were like uh you felt like you could like live again yeah wow that was a good movie though that was, that was a phenomenal really movie. movie it's a good movie phenomenal movie it's not just good. That was a great movie. <laughs> it's good. I'm tired of you just... No, I'm playing. <laughs> All right, go back to... Uh, so SpaceX with the with the big fucking rocket. So they're going to put a gas station... Basically, they're going to... And they want to do the same thing to Mars as well. They want to have a, a gas... You know, They're basically uh, mini space stations that have, you know, refueling. They could, but the thing about that is, is that... It, they're in space, so they're going to have to have constant, you know, refueling things for themselves. Which this BFR rocket, I was looking at it, and again, I'm not a scientist or anything like that. But uh, they found a way to condense the the fluid that they need to to propel the rocket. And I mean, it. This guy seems really smart, and the rocket seems really wild. It looks really cool. And but the thing about it is, is that it's not going to be ready or anything even close uh, before 2023. I think they said, but it's cool because they have it like they want it to be able to land the same way that it takes off, inverted and all that. Um, very wild stuff. But NASA is working on basically the same thing. They want to get back to the moon. It's they've been they've been saying they want to get back to the moon. They want to like colonize the moon, which. I'm curious how you guys feel about that because now if 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 NASA and this guy are both basically desperately trying to get off of this planet and they're all really smart <laughs> what does that mean for us people that are less smart? I uh, go ahead Dan. The world is ending. <laughs> dun dun dun. Zombies are coming. Uh, dude, Speaking I, of zombies, I did see something else, and I didn't get into it because it scared the shit out of me. All right, but uh-oh. they're talking about, uh, I guess, these scientists somewhere in like the Amazon or some some jungle somewhere. Uh, they're they're like experimenting with with uh, like sicknesses, like uh, I don't know, not germs, but uh, viruses and things like that. And they're like mutating them to like try and fight them. Isn't that how like all terrible things start though? Yeah. Like in the movies, like dumb scientists in some dumb jungle that are doing an experiment. The experiment goes wrong. Yes, yes, yep. it's happening now. They're doing it now, people. And then zombies come. Zombies, dude. Stupid fucking zombies. <coughs> I'm already sick of it. You know, I don't want zombies. Oh my god, I don't want zombies. <laughs> like. Oh, you think about it like some natural disaster, <laughs> some natural disaster where like you just get wiped out quick or like an ice age where you just like gradually freeze to death. I would gladly slowly freeze to death than to be chased by zombies for one second. Yeah, I was watching the uh, the day after tomorrow yeah. last night and it reminded me of exactly what is going on in this world right now. Yeah. All these hurricanes that are just demolishing everything. Drowning is like one of my like <laughs> biggest fears, right? <laughs> Drowning and like a you know like you well, you think about like the the movie like you know any of these disaster movies somebody's always yeah. like caught underwater and shit. That's like one of my biggest fears. It's I mean it's got to be one of the most painful one. To I die would from. I would rather drown somebody resuscitate me and instantly drown me again than to be chased by zombies for one second. Because you don't have a gun. You don't have a gun. I'm overweight, <laughs> and I, I have people and things that I want to protect. And I, I, holy shit! If there was a zombie outbreak, I'd be we'd be we'd all be fucked. You need to take about. No, a I wouldn't fa- say we all. We're in a highly densely populated area. Yeah, I'm ready. Full for of them. idiots. I'm ready for them. <laughs> That are just gonna curiously go up to a zombie and be like, "Are you a zombie?" and then get turned into a zombie. 
That's 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 Chester County, Pennsylvania. By gun. <laughs> in a nutshell. By gun. Why would you not have a gun in this day and age? You know, I, we need to get we need to get guns, multiple guns, lots of canned goods, and <laughs> we could eat beef or roti the rest big, of your life. Big big duffel bags because we need to be mobile. Okay? We need to be mobile. You got to have a go bag ready to go. Go bag like an apocalypse bag and a wagon. I need a I need a I need a couple like little like toolkit things. I need. I need to be able to fix things on the fly, Kev. <laughs> what was the last time you fixed something? Listen, I don't want to talk. That's not important. All right, you never know what's going to happen. You need to be prepared for everything. <laughs> At least some things. You need to be prepared for some things outside of your normal box. <laughs> in the event of the apocalypse, right? Are you just going to sit at home for this? Is that your plan? No, I I have a plan. <laughs> Danny, what's your plan? I I'm I am not allowed to reveal the plan. <laughs> me either. I'm like, dude, <laughs> seriously, I don't have a plan. <laughs> <You're> so uh, <laughs> somebody tell me a plan. Listen, You're I live, locked. <laughs> listen, I live right up the street. I'll swing by and I'll grab you, Finn and Jackie. You're gonna include us in the plan? Well, that's a lot of food we gotta sell <laughs> for them. Listen, I'll take cuts. I'll take I'll take food cuts. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'll take food cuts. I'll bring extra Finn food if I have to. <laughs> Finn is my dog, by the way. He's a great dog. Yeah, and I'd feed him the same amount. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. Even in the apocalypse. I'd catch food for Finn. But listen, if you're going to join the colony, you yeah. have to be able to defend yourself. You have a colony figured out? Can you shoot a gun? I have. <laughs> <laughs> so can I? Uh, yes. Well, I'm good at first person shooters. <laughs> That's my resume. <laughs> I die a lot in first person shooters, but like I still I get a lot of kills. If you think about that, that's like your only simulation into this shit, and every time you die and then that that's real, dude. That, you know, so I might be fucked. You need to, dude, I'm telling you, take like $1,000, go get a gun and about 500 rounds and just stash them somewhere. Might be news on NRA Network. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, I I definitely need a gun, but anyway. Oh, I mean. I, I'm just saying I don't have a plan. I'll think about it. You'll think about including me in your plan? <laughs> Because if the if the grid goes down, I do know where you live, and I will come. <laughs> I'll be like yelling to yeah. like, say, "Hey, it's me! Don't shoot!" or something. You know, I, I, I won't be there. <laughs> oh God, I won't. I'll I'll be. So at the as soon as the point. lights flicker, I jog to Danny's. <laughs> I'll be at the meeting point. <laughs> All right. Well, you're gonna have to tell me where that is off air. All right. Um. So, oh, moral of this episode, kids, start coming up with a plan. Everybody's trying to get to the moon. I can't afford that trip. You're going to have to figure it out. <laughs> You're going to have to figure it out. Start making a plan. If you don't have like a fire escape, you know, think about it like that. You got an immediate danger situation and you got a um, possible immediate danger situation in the future. Skynet, something like that could happen. People are dealing with these AI systems now. I was just reading this article this week saying that the your phones and your whatever the Alexis thing is or yeah, whatever yeah. is always listening. Yeah, dude, these things are so dope, though. They are, but no, 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 no. I'm just saying that they're always listening. Yeah. Because like, they have to be ready for you to say, okay, Alexa, or okay, Siri. Well, that's just like with the uh, the iPhones. Right. You can unlock your screen with your fingerprint. Right. Who do you think is getting those fingerprints? They are. The new iPhone 8 and 3D X. map of your face, right? Takes a photo, photo of your face. Takes a mug shot instantly. That's your that's your uh, electric footprint. Mm -hmm. Wow. Have you ever actually looked into the settings in your phone and it tracks where you are, Every, everything. how long you've been there? Yeah, it'll pop up on my phone saying it'll take you this long to get back to where you came from and... I'm like, how do you know where well, like, I'm at now? I'll be leaving my house at a random or where time. where I came from. And it'll know where I want to go because yeah. it sees that at this time, yep. this you many go. times, I've left and gone to this spot. It's Turn wild, man. Down. 
Turn location Big off. Big Brother is always watching. Dude, they're on your ass, Kev. Fuck that. Fuck what? <laughs> that! They know. <laughs> they know you just said that. <laughs> you're speaking into a microphone that's going to be put on the internet, so you're already done for. <laughs> we all are. They know I'm a stoner. What are you going to do, dude? I don't know. Come up with a plan because I need one. <laughs> Tweet us at Might Be News 24 7 your plan. <laughs> so, I'll crash the party. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for people to join the colony. <laughs> yeah. Work hard, kill you, things. You have to be able to shoot a gun relatively good. <laughs> no. One thing's for sure uh, The Walking Dead is a wild show because. Certainly in the beginning of it, like I felt like that was like what would what it would be like. You know, they did a really good job of capturing that and it scared the shit out of me. I can't. I just can't. Next subject. Actually, I don't really have a next subject. SpaceX is wild. Check it out. Go look at it. I got a whole bunch of YouTube stuff. This guy, Elon Musk, is a really smart guy. I don't really know much about him other than some of the random enterprises that he's a part of his tesla cars are pretty cool yeah they actually uh just uh released a new tesla car that is coming out it's either can't it either has already come out or it's coming out and they just did a race and it's faster than lamborghinis and ferraris what? and yeah and it's a and it's like 100 percent electric yeah it's an electric car wild <laughs> yeah they 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 also were trying to do like that autopilot stuff you know, like the auto drive. And it was doing okay, I guess. There was a couple of accidents, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I assume that's going to be in cars at some point. They already got all these things now that beep at you when you're crossing lines and all this other nonsense. Yeah, uh, lane correction. Yeah, and then they got the. They even got the auto braking and stuff, dude. Listen, man, I'm all about that kind of stuff, but early on, what if that stuff breaks? No, I got a story about that. So my mom just bought recently uh a jeep cherokee and it has the auto lane correction everything yeah and she was on the highway now, by saying lane correction it actually makes it puts you back in the lane yeah, or does it just swerve, beep at you it, no if you swerve out it'll swerve back into your lane so it's like fighting you yeah wow so she was going down the road luckily there was nobody around her and she got thrown from lane to lane against her will immediately drove it to the dealership and the dealership said oh there was just an update that shouldn't happen anymore what yeah really <laughs> yes <laughs> give me my money back <laughs> so she, give me my money she back wanted to change lanes no she did not want to change lanes the car changed lanes for her for her Nobody was around her, luckily, and Thank then God. she drove it back to the dealership and told him that this happened. They said, your car had an update that needed that needed to happen, so we did that for you. It shouldn't happen anymore. Really? Yeah. That's insanity. I want nothing to do with that. I've driven mostly like older cars in my life, and they were great because even though I didn't know how to fix them, other people did. I could just find somebody that did. And these cars now, it's just like something goes wrong. It's all like computer stuff and mm -hmm. all this other nonsense. Right. And like what if like that burns out and like your car auto brake system just kicks in while you're on some highway? I was watching. um it's like a fucking pile up because your car just decided to stop for no goddamn reason. That was happening reason. with the Priuses. Yeah. It's nuts. Well, I was watching the uh, the news the other day or I, I forget what it was on, but uh, Mercedes or BMW, one of them just came out with. One of the self-driving cars, mm -hmm. but it's not like 100% self-driving. It watches your face. So if you take your head away from the windshield and like turn to the right or something, it'll alert you. It'll start flashing stuff at you, and then it'll go into autopilot mode. If, wow. you, if you take your eyes off of the road for too long. So not only our phones are watching us, and yep. it's our cars, too. Yep. Dude, if you have a smart TV, your TV is like uh, all that crap, man. It's nuts. It's nuts. But watch that movie, Snowden. Watch that movie. Homework for next week. 
I don't know where you can find it. I just watched it <laughs> I on I know demand. it was on uh, HBO for a while. Snowden. Yeah. Check it out. All right. It's wild. Basically that uh, Edward Snowden guy, uh, some people you know, say he's a traitor, whatever. Whatever. But he pretty much realized that the CIA and everybody's just spying on everybody in the world and let everybody know. But that movie's really crazy. If If what... If that's actually true, it's really crazy. WikiLeaks. We talked about WikiLeaks last season. Didn't we? No, I don't remember. I think we did. Don't remember. WikiLeaks. Go check WikiLeaks out. (laughs) (laughs) Plugs. They're not paying us. Uh, We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to do What's the Point? We got some pretty interesting ones. And then we're going to do the late review of Black Bear... Digital Drug Lord was the album? Yeah, I found this group. I was uh, driving down the street, and uh, the song came on the radio, and it immediately caught my attention. So I uh, figured that would be the group we were going to do a late review because I liked that song that I heard at the time. So I figured, what the hell, I'll listen to the rest of the album. And- Everybody listen to something new because I'd never heard of this guy, yeah. Kev. You never heard of him? Never heard of him. Not prior to Dan. So it's cool. We all listen to something that we hadn't listened bef- to before. So stay tuned to hear if we liked it or not. Spoiler alert. No spoiler alert. Zip your lips. I wasn't going to say anything. (laughs) I was just going to leave them hanging and just Mm. play the song. So thanks for ruining my plan. (laughs) All right. We'll be right back with uh, more Might Be News after this.
Welcome back to Might Be News. I'm Taylor Cooper. Say what up, Kev. Yo. What up, Danny? Hi. Um, It's funny. We were talking about the apocalypse. That song is called Civilization is Crumbling. It's an early hit from Just Green, whoever that is. That dude. That one guy. Yeah. We, I forgot something in the first segment that I usually do or have been trying to do. It's this new music. I find this on iTunes, by the way, <clears throat> Apple Music, whatever. Some uh, there's some pop hits this week. Demi Lovato just dropped her new album, "Tell Me You Love Me." Party Next Door dropped Seven Days. Apparently, this guy <clears throat> made this album literally over the course of a week. Damn! I started listening to it. It's pretty cool. He invested a lot of time. Yep, dedicated to his craft, Kev. <laughs> Uh, a boogie with the hoodie put out an album called the bigger artist i'm gonna check this out just because his name is a boogie with wit the hoodie oh that's awesome i'm gonna check it out that's awesome uno the activist uh, live shine die that's a hip-hop album too i'm probably gonna check that out miley cyrus dropped younger now not a fan Shania Twain new album. Yo. Now. Yo. Really? Yeah. Still looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Smoke Perp, Dead Star is the new album. Tank just dropped Savage. Hoodie Allen brought out the hype. Uh let's see. Marvin Sapp Close is the album. Michael Jackson. There's a new Michael Jackson thing. I added it to my list. I haven't gotten a chance to listen to it yet, but the description of it, the album is called Scream, and it says an MJ compilation that's perfect for this time of year. It's got some, it's got Thriller on there, Blood on the Dance Floor, Rockwell, Somebody's Watching Me. Now, I don't know if these are covers or what, but I'm going to check it out. New Michael Jackson. Uh, Primus dropped a new album, The Disastering Seven. And those are that's pretty much all the all the ones that I I record. Oh, Pearl Jam dropped a new live album. Oh shoot! Let's play too. Bet you won't listen to it. Probably not. Probably not. You're not. You're a fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a fan. And you're a hater. Oh god, I'm a hater. I bet I, they're even worse live. You you just hate everything that I like. It just sounds like a blur of shit hitting a fan. Do you not like Red Hot Chili Peppers? I like Red Hot Chili Peppers. I imagine you wouldn't because I like them. I like them. <laughs> I like the Flyers, too. <laughs> when it's the playoffs. Well, if they make the playoffs. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh -huh. there's like uh, four days until the regular season starts. Wow. So hype. Are you really hype? Yeah, I've been watching preseason games, brother. But you're like really hype? Dude, I'm so excited. Like how hype? That exactly. I got my I hate Crosby t shirt on yeah. right now. I see that. It's creative. It's good. I could make money off of this who, shirt. Who is Crosby? I never heard of her. <laughs> Not even gonna make I'm joking. That. <laughs> All right. Uh, a so that's bitch. That's the you, music you, for this week. You, you agree with my shirt. Yeah, he's a bitch. <laughs> By the way, uh, something that wasn't on iTunes' list that I found uh, tonight. Excuse me, Master Killer from Wu Tang just dropped an album called Loyalty is Royalty, and it's fantastic. I listened to it tonight. It's fantastic. Yeah, you post about it on Facebook. Listen, and the new <laughs> Wu Tang album drops in October. Right? I am mega hype. How hype you are for NHL to start times that by easily infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Easily infinity, and that's how hype I am for the new Wu Tang. Album. Is there any word on this Diamond album getting? No, you know what? I haven't seen anything, and I imagine that's because they have to like exchange it and finalize this thing. It was an eBay sale, so I assume that they're gonna. Well, was, this just show for up over this, a million dollars. Will, will this package just show up to somebody's house through the yeah. mail? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. I assume there's going to be a motorcade, hand delivered. Yeah. By secret agents or and, something. And the RZA. Man, that'd be awesome. Whoever bought it for over a million dollars. They deserve to have it delivered yeah. by him. Yeah. So we'll see. And that Martin Shkreli guy's in jail. So this guy's just going to... 
who, guy or girl, whoever it was, is going to get this Wu-Tang album and hopefully release it on the internet so I can listen to it. And you get two Wu-Tang albums for the price of one. That's what I'm talking about. Get two Wu-Tang pro- albums for the price of a million dollars. Well, I'll get it for free. <laughs> they can't sell it to me unless they want to just hold on to it and not show anybody or show people in their private privacy. Have, a, have have parties and just listen to the new the Wu Tang album that nobody else gets to listen to. And you're just gonna sit there and, as shit. And you're gonna sit there and wait for your invite. Yeah, that I'll, that'll never come. <laughs> it's a double album, Kev. It's big. It's a big thing. It's huge. Huge. It's good. It's good. I want to. Get- <laughs> <laughs> uh, but all right. So uh, here we go. With what's the point? What's the point? Is there a point to this? What is your point? Are you just gonna sit there and look stupid? All right, week seven, what's the point? I guess I'll go first this week. I saw this and I thought it was excellent. Uh, sometime in October, they're releasing a book called Die, a, a Die Hard Christmas, the Illustrated Holiday Classic. Yo. Yes. They're coming out. Yes. Comedian Doogie, Doogie Horner and artist J.J. Horner are collaborating on a Die Hard Christmas, the Illustrated Holiday Classic. Uh, it's a new book which fully combines the joys of Christmas with Stephen E. D'Souza and Jeb Stewart's crackling spirit script. It's uh, basically they're 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 telling the story of Die Hard in the form of "Twas the Night Before Christmas." That's super hype. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, this article that I found, which is on uh, Nerdist, by the way, you can go check it out. They have they have pictures of some of the first couple pages, and it is like in poem form. So I don't know if there's going to be like actual dialogue from the movie in it, but there's there's what's happening in the in the movie is in these pictures. It shows it shows Hans coming in there, and you know with the guns and stuff. So I'm I'm very excited for this. I'm definitely going to pick it up when it comes out. It comes out in late October. It doesn't say. Uh, a date in this article, but it comes I mean out that's that's a full length movie. That'd be kind of hard to put it into that small of a book. So I assume it's, it's, it's going to be a highly abbreviated, just uh, like the concept of what happened. Yeah, yeah, but I'd gladly read that to my kids. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It's better than "Twas the Night Before Christmas" and all through the house, blah 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 blah. Not even a mouse, all that stuff. I would much rather see Bruce Willis kick ass. It's American. <laughs> it's very American great movie too but they probably aren't you know it's good for kids that aren't old enough to watch the movie i guess yeah yeah what do you guys think of the Die Hard trilogy well it's more than a, it's a saga now I, new ones. have you seen the new ones no i have not they're great so i can't speak on them but i love the original Die Hard. it's a it's a it's another phenomenal movie it's an instant classic it's instant. an emotional thrill ride absolutely Instant classic. It gets a ten when he when he's running in there with no shoes on and stuff. It's so wild, and he kills everybody when he's got that gun taped to his back with yeah. a, like wrapping paper. Yeah, freaking awesome. It's awesome, Danny. What's your point? Uh, I I feel like as three guys, we cannot do this entire episode and not bring up the one and only Hugh Hefner. Ah. Rest in peace. Who passed away the other day. Yep. So uh, it made me think about my first time that I discovered a Playboy. Wow. So uh, I believe I was 12 or 13. Uh, I was in my parents' basement, and um, we have this room we call the heater room because that's where the uh, the furnace is. And it's just an enclosed room, and that's all that was in it. It was some storage items and the furnace. And all the way in the back corner – uh, my brothers and I, we found this uh, old, I guess it was like a desk, and uh, there was two cabinets on the right-hand side that were chained shut. So, being kids, we were very curious, so we found out how to get into the cabinet without making it look like we broke in, and we found a stack of one. Hundred Playboys. That is awesome. Wow. <laughs> that is a twelve-year-old's wish. <laughs> we found it from the very first Playboy until my dad stopped collecting them. You you have a copy of the original he, first issue. Playboy. He ended up he ended up selling them to somebody. 
he sold the whole lot to somebody or gave them away. He doesn't have many more, but I just I just heard on MMR of how much that original issue is worth. Really, seven thousand dollars. That's crazy. <laughs> I looked at it. I held it in my hands. Marilyn Monroe. Yep, that is awesome. So, as kids, we would sneak down into the basement. We would break into the cabinet and look at these pictures in Playboy, and that. It's, Changed me as a kid. I mean, because that was you know my first time seeing a Playboy, and I thought that was really freaking cool. That is awesome. You brought up Marilyn Monroe, and um, I read on People Magazine dot com or whatever that uh, he's getting buried next to Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, is he I really? did see that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And if you would have told me that was worth more than seven thousand dollars, I would have been pissed. <laughs> so. Uh, my stepdad collected Playboy, and I definitely got in trouble multiple times for sneaking into his room when they weren't home and going through them and doing whatever I did with them, <laughs> <laughs> trying to put them back uh, where I found them and stuff, and doing a terrible job and getting well, caught. See, <laughs> I got the first time I got caught, he had them all in order, and I thought I did it right, and I guess I don't know. He thought something was up, and I'm the only asshole there that would be grabbing his shit to go jerk off to. And then, uh, <laughs> so he got he came down on me pretty hard for that. And then, and but then he would play tricks on me to like uh, just to catch me. Like uh-huh. he would put shit out of order, and then like I would put it back in order. He'd be like, "Ha! Ah, I fucking knew it. You know, you're fucking in there jerking off to my shit again." Like, Fuck. So. That's Hugh Hefner's legacy to me. Um, just jerking off as a teen. <laughs> jerking off as a young man, you know, just making my way in the world, just uh, looking at nudies. <laughs> you know, it was tasteful, you know. It is. It, I love the articles. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I read it for I the articles. I always love too. it when people say that. It's like you go to Hooters for the wings, and like, you know, like it just. No, dude, you're definitely fucking jerking off <laughs> to Playboy. Why else would you get the damn magazine? Playmate of the month and all that. You get the center. Sometimes you get the fucking celebrities yeah. in there, you know, Pamela Anderson. Yeah, it's all good. Cindy Crawford was in there. Oh, dude, that was great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> hey, man. They said Christina Aguilera was thinking about doing it, too. There's a just, bunch of people that were looking at it. She just had it. a kid a few years ago. I think Britney Spears was thinking about it. Yeah, she said after she was in, you know, decent shape, she was going to do it. I've been waiting for that to come out. Well, and then they took Still nudity waiting. away, right? Halfway recently? Yeah, but it came back. It came back? Yeah. They lost yeah. sales. Sex sales? Yes, it does. Sure does. Hugh Hefner definitely knew that. So we can pretty easily say he is not in a better place. Uh, depends. Depends on... Who's right and who's wrong? Uh, yeah. Maybe you got all those virgins up there. Uh, <laughs> there ain't virgins uh, anymore. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe he gets up there and it's just sex all the time with whoever, whoever he wants. Good for him. Maybe that's heaven. Yeah. Or just maybe he just goes up there and jerks off. <laughs> that's what he does. Now. I don't want to think about half jerking off. <laughs> no, that's what he does. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Jeff, let's hear about your first time. Uh. First time, I believe I was at a friend's house, and uh, he pulls me over, and he's like, yo, yo dude, I got to show you this. So we open up the cabinet to, it was in his in, in the living room uh, on a very high shelf, and we open up the cabinet, and on the, ca- on the cabinet, there's a sticky note that says, J, it, uh, it says, uh, I don't want to use any names. It says, so and so and so and so, please do not go in this cabinet. <laughs> well, that's like putting a red button there and saying, don't press the button. <laughs> so we went in the cabinet, we pull them down, we're looking at them, and almost got caught. Hear the garage door opening real quick, put them back, and don't know what happens after that. But that was my first time. There was a freaking note on the door. Wow. That says, so and so and so and so, don't look in here. So you're going to tell us that you were like listening to Pearl Jam and like, found, shut up. Found a Playboy. <laughs> shut up. Got like real, like romantic with yourself and like started like getting real in depth with it. Wow. 
As he's jerking off, Better Man starts yeah. playing. Yeah, <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> You guys I, suck. I one hundred percent guarantee that I don't suck as bad as Pearl Jam. I guarantee. They got money in the bank. Does it? Su- do I suck as much as Black Bear? We're about to find out. Here's a late review. I know it's a little late, but you're just hearing about this. I can't believe I'm just hearing. Why didn't I know about this sooner? Try again. I fucked up. You suck, dude. As much as Pearl Jam. Wow. <laughs> No, I just I shouldn't have smoked before. <laughs> I shouldn't have smoked on the break, and I did, and now you get to laugh at me because I totally <laughs> skipped your point. Oh. So go ahead, Kev, what's what's your point dude, this week? Dude, wow, you're taking the wind right out of my <laughs> sails. <laughs> and you know what? I already know what it is, and it's a good one. And I'm like upset with myself because I did that, and I can't like unpause it. <laughs> I can't like undo what I did. So like we, we're just going to have to roll with it. All right. So Al Bleak, he was in the military and he was in the Air Force or he was in the Air Force Station Mon- Montauk. Montauk? Is that Montauk. Yeah. Montauk. Yes. So he they are testing psychological warfare techniques and researching time travel in 1943. This dude claims that he spent six weeks in... 2137 no the year 2137 and then also two years in 2749 uh he was in the hospital bed for six weeks in two three one or two one three seven and because there was all kinds of radiation issues that he was having. But while he was there, he was able to see the TV and news reports. And he was saying that we will be at war with Europe and stuff like that. And then for two years, when he was in 2749, the computers and everything were basically <coughs> waiting on us hand and foot, doing everything for us. Pretty much humans didn't have to do anything kind of like Wally. Wow. Kind of like Wally. And where I wanted to go with this was if we could time travel, why are you looking at me like that? Yeah, hold on. Before you, me before the you, fuck out. Before you ask the, a question like that, we need to discuss what you just talked Whoa. about. Whoa. Okay, we need to, we need to Whoa. backtrack a little bit. Yo, I just got mind fucked. <laughs> so you're talking about this guy... He time traveled somehow. Somehow. In 1943, Mm -hmm. they were doing psychological warfare testing and testing the time travel, testing with time travel. So he. On on a submarine. On a submarine. Right. He was underwater being tested on for time travel. Correct. And he time traveled. And he time traveled. What years? He was. He. The year that they were doing the research was 1943 yeah. and went to 2137 and 2749. Two separate occasions. Two, no, this was back to back. Back to back. Back to back. He, he left 2137 and went right into 2749. He, so he didn't spend much time in either. He spent six weeks in 2137 and two years in 2749. What? Yeah. <laughs> and this guy's a real guy. This guy's a real guy. He's not a cartoon. Not a cartoon. You said 1943, right? Yes. Wasn't that the year of LSD? No. No. <laughs> Acid? No, I don't believe no. so. Anything? Well, Anything that's going to make me feel a little bit better about this? This was the time of World War II. Uh, so, okay. So. This guy's old then. Yeah, this guy's really old. And he still believes this? Yeah. In his mind, this actually happened? Yes. Telling very detailed stories about it. Wow. Like still dealing with the radiation poisoning from when we get nuked from no. North Korea. N- n- what? He, <laughs> I mean, does he talk about any flying cars or anything? or just? Uh... He did not address anything about the... He did not address anything about uh, technology other than 
we do in, in the year 20 what was it in the year 2749 we really don't do anything computers do everything we're just kind of there being fat americans so we right. win the war with europe in the 21 somewhere didn't say that didn't i didn't the article didn't say any of that wow. it just said that we were now at war with europe wow. and you know it, it actually said we are in a world war with europe huh all right go ahead and ask your question because that's wild i don't really have much to comment on that yeah i don't, I don't know what to say um if you we could time travel would you go to past or present and what would you want to see i mean that's a pretty loaded question yeah, past or future past or you said oh, past yes or yes yes past or future i'm sorry Past or future, and what would you want to see? That's a pretty loaded question. I mean, because there's a lot of historical stuff that you could go back and see, but would you want to go to the future and see what there is to happen? Yes. You would? Yes, I would. What would you want to see happen? Uh, I mean, aside from the, would you pick to aside go aside from the generic uh question or answer of like world peace or something like that? Uh, I would definitely like to see some sort of like utopia, you know, like some sort of just like real, just like chill <laughs> experience. <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> you definitely suck more than Pearl Jam. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> no, I, I, you know, without just saying, like I said, without just saying like world peace, I'd like to see some sort of like worldwide, you know, coalition of the, of the willing, you know, like everybody in it together. Okay. I'd like to see everybody, you know, kind of clean up the environment a little bit and all those things, but I'll take a flying car, you know, I'll take a flying car. <laughs> How Laser about you, guns. You know what? Scratch that. Lightsaber. I want a lightsaber. <laughs> Star Wars. How do you know, Kev? What do you what, what year? I don't I didn't say what year I'd be going to. If there's any year in the human history of evolution where there's a lightsaber, I'd like to go to that time. So so what are you going to type into your DeLorean? You're going to say lightsaber? I mean, if I had to guess, I would have to say somewhere in the next 1000 years. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Danny? Uh, if I could travel forward, I'd probably go to a twenty seven fifty to see if this guy was full of shit or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, good point. yeah but good point. I'd uh, I'd probably go back in time. Really? Yeah, because I would have liked to live in the fifties. That would have been awesome. I would have really liked to live in the fifties. The the you know hanging out at the diners, the the drive through theaters, just you know. I just think that's a cool era that you could have been alive for. What if you could, you know what? And that's a good point too, because if you go back, you can you could change the world. Yeah, good. You could change your world. Well, like, what if you could bring stuff with you? Like, what if I could bring like a bunch of money with me that is worth what it is now, but then it was like holy shit, money. It wouldn't be worth anything because think about that the 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 date that would be printed on that money. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I would just start throwing it to people. And if I if I could go back in time, it'd definitely be like, you know, like you said, 50s or like uh, even like the Wild West would be fun. Just be a bandit. You, but you can't shoot a gun well. <laughs> Dude, I would learn. I would learn. If I could be like a fucking bank robber or something and like, you know, like just know that they don't have the forensic technology to ever catch me. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. All right. So that, that was Kev's point. What would you do, Kev? I would go back in time and invest monies. Yeah. Or go like a week into the future, figure out the Powerball numbers, and then come back. Wow. Yep. That's it. That's it. Uh, that's good. That's good. That's a good uh, little idea there. Yeah. Powerball numbers. Yeah, it's something interesting to think about. Yeah. Start betting on the World Series. Yeah. Like the year before or the right. year after or whatever. Huh. Interesting. I mean, you know what? I'd, I'd probably be like an international man of mystery. 
Like I'd probably like go and do like all kinds of shit and then just like fly. Like you said, like just even just time travel like a couple weeks in advance and like I I could like probably like be a time travel like superhero like prevent like murders and stuff. That'd be dope. That'd be really dope. You know, Kev, this was a really good point. And I'm so glad that we talked about it. <laughs> Me too. I'm glad we didn't. Jerks. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't skip it. Like I did. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kev. <laughs> All right, so I already did the stupid intro for the for the late review, so we're not going to do that again because we're already up against it here. But the late review this week is Black Bear Digital Drug Lord. Uh, I, I listened to it. I did a little research on this guy and he is, uh, I guess he, he got famous for being a co-writer for Justin Bieber. He wrote the boyfriend song. I don't listen to Justin Bieber. I like that. No, I've heard song. that song before. No, it's a dope song. Good. It's good. Um, <laughs> so I liked a couple songs on here. The hit that you were talking about, Danny, that you heard on the radio was that Do Re Mi song. I really like that song. That's probably my favorite song on the album. Wish You the Best was good. Juicy Sweatsuits, probably my second favorite. I Miss the Old You, I like that. It's ten songs on the album. I, I don't like any of the other ones, really. It's, uh, it's just too poppy. To be quite honest with you, I didn't really dig the guy's voice. Mm -hmm. I think he did like a little bit too much of the auto tune when he didn't need to. Too much. And I just, I don't know. And he like, I don't know, he just kind of like, that was like my best impression. <laughs> I give it a four. Danny? Um, like, like I said earlier, I heard the guy uh, playing on the radio, so... Took out my nifty cell phone, asked Siri who was playing, and told me... Uh, She's always listening. Yeah, always. <laughs> told me it was this guy named Black Bear, so I immediately went to YouTube, looked at the album, and thought that we had to do a review. Uh, the song Do Re Mi was awesome. It was an awesome song, had an awesome beat. It's, uh, I played it probably 10 or 15 times since yeah. I first heard it. It's really good. So if um if you don't want to listen to the album, the album isn't that great, um and that's why we're doing the review so we can tell you you know what we think what we what we thought. Do re me, awesome song. Go and listen to it. Uh, I think you'll like it just like we did. I've been posting the uh, basically like the song of the week YouTube uh, link underneath the episode on iTunes and SoundCloud. You can go there and just like click more info or whatever, and it'll show you. I'll post the link to Do re me. It's a great song. Yeah. So um, I, I liked about six or seven of the songs. Um, Chateau was good. Uh, if I could, I would feel nothing. Uh, double, wish you the best. Um, there's ten songs. I'm not going to give it a seven since I like seven songs because, you know, they were mediocre likes. So I'm going to go with a five. Decent five. Okay. Kev? Do Re Mi, you... Posted that to to me and Taylor. I really liked that Do Re Mi song. It was a solid song. It was catchy. It had a good beat. I yeah. liked the lyrics. Very catchy. Yes, very catchy. I gave the rest of the album a listen. Like you said, there was 10 songs. I did not like one of them. <laughs> not yeah. one of them. I, I mean, I can understand that. Yeah. I can understand what it. What are you laughing about? Because <laughs> it's like the only album that you listen to cover to cover, and you don't like any of them. I did not like one of those totally songs. disproving my point from when I lectured you about it, saying you might like song four, or like you right after you cut it off, you might like it, and you listen to all ten of this stupid idiot. <laughs> so I listened to ten <laughs> songs. I liked one song. This album gets a one. Wow. One. Co-host Kev with the one. <laughs> I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, I'm, I I dig that review because this is somebody that neither one of us, yeah, all three of us, of us, we've yeah. never heard of this guy right. before. Yeah. I like that too. So it was it was a new review for all of us. There was only one song that I couldn't even finish listening to. I had to turn it off. Uh, that was the very first song on the album. So don't judge the album by that song. Judge it by Do Re Mi. Don't judge it by Do Re Mi because it's way better True. than every other song. True, <laughs> but no, it's it's okay if you're into that kind of stuff. It's cool, but I really I I dug the Do Re Mi song. All the other ones, like you said, Danny, were kind of like mediocre. Likes. Yeah. it's just kind yeah. of like eh, yeah. 
I could listen to that. If it comes on, I'll may or may not change it. <laughs> Whatever. So that's uh, that's this week's uh, late review. What do you got for um, this week in history, Kev? This week in history was not strong at all. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, make I, some stuff up. Just make some stuff up. <laughs> fake news. Fake news. <laughs> fake news. Uh, if you could create a fake news story right now, what it would it be? Uh, fake news. Uh, I time traveled and hit the Powerball. <laughs> Danny. God, I would have no idea. <laughs> I don't either. It was just a fun question. Anyway, Kev, go ahead. October 5th, 1947, the first televised White House address, President Truman urged Americans to refrain from eating meat on Tuesdays and poultry on Sundays to help starving people in other countries. Uh, 1962, the Beatles released their first hit, Love Me You Do, in Britain. 2001, Barry Bonds breaks Mark McGuire's record of 71 home runs with his 72nd home run. Wow. October 8th, 2005, a 7.6 magnitude earthquake centered in Pakistan killed more than 80,000 people and injured 65,000 more. Holy shit. Yeah, that's a huge earthquake. Damn. Yeah, but that's what I got. Wow. It ended up being stronger than I thought. Your segment. Gotcha. <laughs> Earthquake change. It was a game changer. You said eighty thousand dead. Eighty thousand people. Insanity. Right. Wow. wow. <laughs> you gotta think those people thought the world was ending, right? Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't imagine going through something like that. You know, every time we talk about the end of the world and stuff like that, I all I always think about like what people had to have been thinking during like World War II or like the Cuban Missile Crisis or like. Even even like the Great Plague or the bubonic plague type shit, I'll you know, go that far back. People had to have been bugging. Like right. it's the end, it's the end, it's the end. So there I guess if there is light at the end of the tunnel, it's just that we're not dead yet. So Well, how about the people that have just had to go through uh Hurricane Maria? Oh god, yeah. You know, our friend uh Leah down in the uh the Virgin Islands, she said that was the longest nine hours of her life where she thought that her life was ending. Yeah. That's scary. Could I mean, these people went through it for months, years. Like, could you imagine? It's incredible stuff. A lot of a lot of really crazy stuff going on in the world. So we try to keep it light, you know. Got a little heavy at some spots this week, but I think I think everybody kind of gets the fact that we we're, we're not trying to do that. But sometimes it's a little difficult because, like we said, there's a million terrible news stories that we got to dig through to do anything. So, Kev, we're doing the best we can. You guys are doing a great job. You're not going to hit me with any dad jokes? I got nothing for you. Nothing. This week. I got nothing. Listen. Let me hear it. I felt bad because my dad jokes last week were not dad jokes at all. They were just grimy jokes. So, I, I actually gross. Yeah. I set up a few dad jokes. I, I can hit you with some off the top. All right. Go ahead. What do you call a guy with no arms and no legs that sits at your front door? I don't know. Matt. <laughs> I had a dream last night that I was a muffler. I woke up exhausted. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> why didn't the vampire attack Taylor Swift? Why? Cuz she had bad blood. Oh man. But uh, right. What do you call a fish with two knees? A toony fish. A toony fish. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What what do you call a deer with no eyes? What? No idea. Ooh. Shut up. <laughs> that one was good. All right, and last one. All right, uh, what do you call a cow with uh, two legs? Hmm. Lean beef. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. <laughs> <laughs> Fema hates us, or not Fema? Peter. <laughs> I got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, great show this week. Um, follow us on Twitter at Might Be News 247. That's Might Be News 247 for the haters. As always, I'm Taylor Cooper with me. As always, 
<laughs> the one and only, <laughs> as always, co-host Kev. I love you guys. As always, <laughs> co-host Dan. Peace out. And uh, as always, I'm Taylor Cooper. And this is might be news. Sometimes it might be fake news. You're dragging this shit out. <laughs> As always, you guys have a great week. (laughs) (laughs) All right, man, for real. Uh, I'll catch you next week, as always.